All right, welcome, uh, Math 2 students. Uh, this is your second video for week six. Uh, this is 11.6 slash 11.7. Uh, it is, in, in essence, uh, we're factoring trinomials. A equals one and A is greater than one. Uh, we're doing this in one day. Um, it's a pretty easy, con no, not e it's not an easy concept, but we're gonna run the same method for both. Now, there are multiple methods of how to do this. There's box, there's guess and check. There's one that uh, a teacher at Movali uses, what they call MARF. Um, the reality is the most generally accepted one, the one you're going to hear in college, um, the one that you can find 5,000 videos on on YouTube or Khan Academy, is this method, which is called AC split the middle. Okay, AC split the middle. And I've been referring to some of this kind of these parts in different things that we've been doing. So it is really much going to fit the style of what we have been learning already. Okay. Now, general recap, what does factor mean? Well, factoring typically means undoing multiplication, right? Undoing multiplication. In essence, you are kind of reverse engineering right? Reverse engineering, okay? In essence, because remember, if I have two outside of x, uh, let me give two out of side of x plus four, right? And I say distribute, you're going to end up with two x plus eight, right? Well, factoring is just going in reverse. When am I pulling out a greatest common factor? And the greatest common factor between two and eight is simply two. Pull out that. What am I left with? X plus four, right? So factoring is just going in reverse. It's reverse engineering of multiplication, all right? So we're going to do A equals one first. Oh, wait, hang on. Let's go back. What is a factor? Well, you should know what a factor is. We've done this one. It's a smaller number or variable that can be multiplied into a larger number or variable, right? It's just a smaller, just a smaller variable, smaller number, smaller variable, taken out of or could be multiplied into something bigger, okay? All right, so get all that, get all that. So I want you to be able to read the directions. So here we go. Factoring, and remember, we're starting with A equals one. We're starting very simple, okay? So here are the steps to this. Now remember, I'm giving it to you on here. So. I, and I'm going to explain them, and I'm going to do them as we do these, okay? So, AC split the middle refers to A and the C refer to the title and the name, and that is we're going to multiply the A and the C values. Now, one of the things you should remember is a trinomial. We're doing trinomials, which means three terms, and we're doing quadratic trinomials, more importantly. So, when we do that, my standard form is always AX squared plus BX plus C, right? AX squared plus BX plus C. And when I refer to the A term and the C term, I mean this term and this term right here. I don't mean the X squared. I mean the A, the coefficient that goes with the X squared. And I mean the C, the constant term, okay? So A times C is step number one. Number two, find the factors of that number, A times C, that either add up to or is the difference of the middle term, which is our B term. So they're either going to add up to the B term or they're going to be subtracted from each other to get to the B term, okay? And that's based on the sign, and we'll talk about that as we get into it. All that is based on the sign. Step three, you're going to rewrite the middle term, the B term, using the two factors of A times C that are the sum or the difference of that middle term. So basically, we're going to split the middle, okay? Split the middle 
between those two factors, okay? So we're gonna split that B term between the factors. Group number four, group the two terms, or group the terms to form pairs. We're gonna factor by grouping, which we just did, right? So we've done factor by grouping, so you know how to do this. So put first two together, separate the other, the last two together, and split the middle, okay? That's the second time I'm referring to split the middle. First one, splitting the B term, the middle term, and splitting the middle, okay? You should have that idea in your head already. And then number five, factor out the shared common binomial parentheses and rewrite. So steps four and five are what we just did in lesson 11.4 and 11.5, or 11.5 really when we did factor by grouping. So understand this is our factor by grouping right here, okay? This is by grouping right here. Let me type this. So this is factor by grouping right here. Okay, four and five is that. Okay, so the only thing that's new for you are one, two, and three. Okay, so let's do these. Okay, starting off nice and simple. I have x squared plus 7x plus 10. So step one says multiply the a and the c values. Well, what is my a term here? Well, since there's nothing out here, a is equal to one. This is why we call these a equals ones. Because your leading term is x squared, right? So your a term is one. So multiply one by 10, my a times my c, one times 10, which comes up to 10, right? One times 10 is 10. Now, find the factors of 10. One and five, or ugh, I can't even speak. Ugh. One and 10, two and five, my factors of 10. Now, step two says find the factors of that number, A times C, find the factors of 10 that add up to or is a difference in the middle term. Well, since my middle term is positive and my last term is positive, I'm going to find the ones that add up. Signs matter here, okay? <clears throat> And so we'll see this as we go along, okay? So what are the two factors that add up to seven? Two and five. So now I want you to rewrite the middle term using the two factors of A times C. What I mean by that is you're going to rewrite this as two X and five X, because two X plus five X is equal to seven X, right? So two X and five X. And since both of those are positive, I can write 2x plus 5x, right? Bring down my x squared. Bring down my 10, my a and my c. Now I have four terms. So what I'm going to do? Factor by grouping. So x squared plus 2x, 5x plus 10. Split the middle. So I'm now split the middle twice, right? I'm using that same concept here. Splitting the middle term, B, between the 2x and the 5x, right? 2 and the 5, because remember, an x has to go with them. So I'm splitting that 7 between 2 and 5. And it's really 2x plus 5x. And now I'm splitting the middle again, just like we did in factor by grouping. Factor out a GCF. Factor out the common binomial. Remember, this five is a positive right here, right? And this is a positive, so x plus five. Okay. Do another one. Remember, we're starting nice and easy, okay? x squared plus 16x plus 15. One times 15 is 15. Factors of 15. One and 15, three and five. What are the two factors that add up to 16? Because the 16 is positive and the 15 is positive in the trinomial x squared plus 16x plus 15. So 1 plus 15 is 16. So split that 16 between the two factors. 1x plus 15x. Rewrite it with the x squared.
split the middle. Group two, group two. Factor out a GCF of both. Factor out the common binomial. Okay. How are we feeling? We're doing okay? All right. Make sure you pause if you need to, okay? Now, let's do the next one. X squared plus 7X minus 18. So 1 times negative 18 is negative 18. So I know I'm going to need negatives. And I actually, I'm going to hang on. I'm going to raise this right over here, and I'm going to give myself some space here. Okay? Because I want you to feel comfortable about what we're going to do. So A times C, this 1, which is an A, right? 1 times negative 18. And I want to find the factors of a negative 18. So the only way to get a C term that's negative is if I have one positive and one negative. So I'm going to find two sets of these. I'm going to find when 1 is negative and when 18 is negative. And I'm going to find all the factors this way. Now, <clears throat> I found all the factors that give me negative 18, right? 1 times negative 18 is negative 18, correct? So, which one of these 6 adds up to a positive 7? Well, it's 9 and negative 2, because 9 minus 2 is 7. So, I'm going to take that and split the middle with it. So I'm going to say negative 2x plus 9x. Now I'm going to rewrite it with all four terms. I'm going to, in essence, bring down the x squared. And I'm going to split the middle, right? I'm going to give some distance because I'm going to factor by grouping now. Factor out a GCF. Factor out a GCF. Factor out the common binomial. Remember this nine is positive. And there we go. Okay. <clears throat> Let's do a couple more. We've got a total of six of these before we switch over to the A is greater than one. But the process is going to be the same. Okay, I promise. It's not going to be that much more difficult. All right, so the next one, x squared minus 6x minus 27. So I want to find the factors of 1 times negative 27. So 1 times negative 27, which equals negative 27, right? And I want all the factors that are going to be of a negative 27. So this is going to be 1 times negative 27 and negative 1 times 27. 3 times negative 9, and negative 3 times 9. And which one of those groupings is the factors that have a difference of 6? And I know it's a difference because one's positive and one's negative, right? And I want a difference of 6. I want a minus 6. Well, when I look at this, it's going to be the 3 times the negative 9. Why? Because 3 minus 9 is negative 6. So as I do this, I know that I want to split this middle term. Split the middle, right? A times C, split the middle. I'm going to split the middle twice. This one becomes 3x minus 9x. Okay. Bring down the x squared.
bring down the 27, put some distance between them, right? Factor out a GCF. Factor out a GCF. Now, that nine, that leading term is negative, right? So I know that I need to factor out a negative here, right? I need to factor out a negative. And so what is the GCF between nine and 27? Well, it's nine, right? So I'm left with X and factor out a negative nine from negative 27, it ends up being a positive three. Factor out the common binomial, X plus three, and X minus nine. All right. Do another one. A times C. A times C, one times negative 32 equals negative 32. Factors of negative 32 that add up to 14, right? So I want a total of 14 between them. One has to be positive, one has to be negative. So one times 32, and that's negative one times 32, or one times negative 32. And then I have, what else? Two goes in at 16 times and two times negative 16. Now I'm gonna stop right there because at the end of the day, what's 16 minus two? 14. So I know that these two become negative two X plus 16 X, right? So I have that right where I want it. Bring down my AC, my first term. Rewrite. Bring down my C term. Split the middle. Split the middle. Factor by grouping, right? Once I have four terms, I'm always factor by grouping. Factor out a GCF. X minus two. Factor out a... Well, wow, 16, X minus two. Factor out the common binomial. And there you go. One more of these, I'm gonna clear out some space. Now, a term is one here. All these are a equals ones, right? A equals one, come on. So my a term is one, my last term is 18. But you're gonna notice something here. On this one, my middle term is negative. Well, the only way to have a middle term negative and a last term positive is if both factors are negative, okay? This is where two negatives can add up to be a negative, right? So I know that I'm gonna have factors of a negative one times negative 18 to become a positive 18, right? So hang on, I'll rewrite that. Let me re-say that. I wanna find factors of 18, but they have to be negatives. So this is gonna be like a negative one times negative 18, and a negative two times negative nine, and a negative three times negative six. In a, this group, which of these factors add up to nine? Well, three and six, right? And a negative three plus negative six is a negative nine. So split that middle term, that negative nine X between the negative three X and the negative six X. Bring down Bring down the x squared, split the middle, bring down my c term. Factor out a GCF, factor out a GCF. Leading term here is a negative, so I must pull a negative out. That six is negative, so the negative six comes out. 
factor out the common binomial. And there you go. That is A equals one using the AC split the middle. Okay. All right. So let's kind of warm up our A is greater than one brains here. And that is today we'll be able to factor trinomials whose A value is greater than one as well. Okay. And we're going to follow the same process, the same steps. Okay. So as do this, let's look at it. 5x plus 4 times x plus 2. Well, if I FOIL this, right? If I FOIL this, first outside, inside, last, I get 5x times x or 5x squared. I get 5x times 2 is 10x. I get 4 times x, which is 4x. And I get 4 times 2, which is 8. And if I combine like terms, simplify this, right? Because I'm multiplying these. I'm not factoring, right? Factor means I'm undoing this. Multiplying means I'm going this way, right? So I'm going to combine like terms, and this becomes 5x squared plus 14x plus 8, okay? And that's what would happen if I multiply these binomials. Well, today I'm going to be able to take a trinomial like this and go in reverse and, and come up with the two binomials that created it, okay? So here we go. First one, 2x squared plus 11x plus 5. And now notice that I have the same steps written out here for you, right? I have the same steps written out for you because we are following the same pattern here. Everything we've done is going to be the same, okay? Whether or not it's A equals one or A is greater than one, we're going to follow the same method, okay? So this time, A times C. Well, my A term is the only thing different this time, and that is it's two. So it's gonna be two times five or 10, right? So I want to find factors of 10, 1 and 10, 2 and 5. Which of those factors add up to 11? 1 and 10. Split the middle. Okay. Now, rewrite using all four terms. In essence, bring down the 2x squared, bring down the 5, the c term. So 2x squared plus x plus 10x plus 5. Factor by grouping. So I'm going to split the middle and factor out a GCF. Factor out a GCF of the second group. Factor out the common binomial. And there you have it. 2x plus 1 times x plus 5. And remember, the order doesn't really matter. If you wrote the x plus 5 first and the 2x plus 1 second, that is fine. Okay? I would be fine with x plus 5 times 2x plus 1. That does not bother me in the slightest bit. It means the same thing. Okay, here we go. Ready? 5x squared plus 14x plus 8. So 5 times 8 is 40. And I want to find factors of 40 that add up to 14. Okay, well, 1 and 40, 2 and 20, 4 and 10. And I'm going to stop right there because I know that four plus 10 is 14. So I'm gonna split that middle between four X and 10 X. I'm gonna rewrite it with the first two terms and the second two terms, the A term, the AX term, right? Five X squared. I'm gonna write it out here. And I'm gonna split the middle at the same time. So positive 10 X plus eight. I'm going to factor out a GCF because I'm factored by grouping since I have four terms. Factor out an X. Factor out a two. 
and that's a positive two. Factor out the common binomial, 5x4, bring the x and the positive two together. <clears throat> okay, 6x squared plus 31x plus 18. Well, when we do this one, I've got, and I've got to get my calculator here because I don't remember what six times 18 is off the top of my head. So six times 18 is 108 and finding factors of 108. I know it's one and 108 and that doesn't add up to 31. I've got two and 54, that adds it up to 31. Uh, 108 divided by three is 36, so three and 36. That doesn't add up to 31. So let's try four, 108 divided by four, and that's 27, so four and 27. Does four plus seven, or sorry, four plus 27 add up to 31? It does. So I know I found my factors, that add up to 31, so split the middle, 4x plus 27x. Bring down the 6x squared plus the 4x. Rewrite the 27x and bring down the 18. I'm splitting the middle because I know I'm factor by grouping, right? And we've talked about this, we know we're factor by grouping here. GCF between 6x squared and 4x is 2x. That gives me a 3x plus 2. GCF between 27x and 18, well, that's going to be 9. So factor out a 9. That gives me 3x plus 2. Now, you'll notice we've done plenty of examples of these. Our binomials are always going to be the same if we're doing them right. That's one of the things that we figure out. If they come out to be the same, we know we've done them right. Factor out the common binomial, 3x plus 2. Put the GCFs together, the 2x and the 9, and that's your final answer. Okay. 9x squared minus 15x plus 4. So 9 times 4 is going to be 36. A times C. A is 9. My C is 4, so 9 times 4 is 36. Factors of 36, then in this case, are going to be adding together to be, right, adding together to be 15. And how do I know that? Because my B term is negative, but my C term is positive. So this is going to be like a negative 1 times negative 36 or negative 2 times negative 18, negative 3 times negative 12. So I'm looking for two factors that add up together because they both have to be negative, and I found them at 3 and 12. Split that middle, negative 3x minus 12x. Rewrite with the 9x squared and the 4 brought down. 9x squared minus 3x minus 12x plus 4. Split the middle. Factor out a GCF. 3x between 9x squared and negative 3x. So factor out a 3x. So this becomes a 3x minus 1. Factor out a GCF and negative 12x plus 4. So I can pull out a negative four. Why is I'm pulling out a negative? Because that leading term is negative. So I got to pull out a negative. This becomes a positive three X minus one. Four divided by negative four is negative one. Factor out the common binomial. Three X minus one. Put the GCFs together. Three X minus four. Okay. 4x squared minus 19x minus 5. 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. So I'm trying to find factors that are going to have a difference 
of 19, right? Because one's got to be positive, one's got to be negative. Why? Because the four, the A term is positive and my C term is negative. So like one times negative 20. Well, whoa, I'm done already, right? Because one minus 20 is 19. That was pretty simple, pretty straightforward, pretty easy to find those factors because that we stopped at the first one. So split the middle, x minus 20x. Bring down the 4x squared, and that x is positive, right? Yep. Bring down the c term. And I've already split the middle, right? Factor out a GCF x 4x plus 1 factor out a gcf well 5 is going to be my greatest common factor between the negative 20x and 5 right but my leading term is negative so i got to pull out a negative here and this becomes 4x plus 1 negative 5 divided by negative 5 is a positive 1 factor out the common binomial 4x plus 1 and x minus 5 Okay, two more. And I know some of you are like, oh my God, this is too many. Well, better safe in, than sorry, right? Make sure I make sure you see it plenty of time versus just doing two or three of them and sending it on your merry way. Okay, 4x squared minus 31x plus 21. So this is going to be A times C is 4 times 21, which is going to be 84 and factors of 84, then I know that I'm going to have to add up to negative 31. And the reason I know they're going to have to add up to that is because my B term here is negative, but my C term is positive. And the only way to get a positive C term, if my B term is negative, is a negative times a negative. So negative 1 times negative 84, negative 2 times negative 42, and then I also have negative 3, and that goes in uh, 28 times. Whoa, negative 3 plus negative 28 is negative 31, so I can stop right there. I don't need to do any more. Split the middle, so negative 3x minus 28x. Bring down my AX squared term, 4X squared. Bring down my 3X. I'm splitting the middle at the same time. So negative 28X plus 21. Then bringing down my C term. Factor out a GCF. In this case, it's just an X. So 4X minus 3. Factor out a GCF of 28 and 21, and it's a negative 28x plus 21. So the common factor between 28 and 21 is 7. In this case, it has to be a negative because that 28 is a negative. So negative 7. So this becomes a positive 4x minus 3. Factor out the common binomial, 4x minus 3. Put the GCFs together, x and negative 7. Last one, 3x squared minus 7x minus 20. 3 times negative 20 is negative 60. And I want factors of negative 60 that have a difference of 7. And the reason why I know it's difference is that 3 in the negative 20 are positive and negative. So my C term is negative. So with my C term being negative, my B term had to be negative anyway, right? Because if C is negative, then B has to be negative, right? So I want factors that are opposites of each other that are going to have a difference of 7. So I know that it's like negative 1 times 60, 1 times negative 60, negative 2 times 30, 2 times negative 30, uh, negative 3 times 20, right? And 3 times negative 20, negative 4 times 15, 
four times negative 15, negative five times 12, or five times negative 12. And right there, I can stop. Why? Because five minus 12 is negative seven. So split the middle term, split my B term between those. So five X minus 12 X. Bring down my AX squared, three X squared. Bring down my five X. Bring down my 12 X. Bring down my C term. GCF. It's an X, so 3X plus 5. GCF between negative 12X minus 20. Well, what number goes into 12 and 20 is 4. Since the 12 is a negative, it has to be a negative. Negative 12 divided by negative 4 is a positive 3, so 3X. And negative 20 divided by negative 4 is a positive 5. Factor out the binomial, and that's the common binomial. Bring down the two GCFs, put them together, and there you go. All right, math one, you have a Delta math assignment and homework check this week in addition to the paper assignment as well, the paper worksheet, so you have for math one, this set of notes with a worksheet, Delta math, and a Delta math homework check. And then you'll be done for the week. Math two, this was your second video for the week. You had 11.4 and 11.5, and then 11.6, 11.7, which is this video. You have the worksheets, you have Delta math assignment, all just one of them. So only one Delta math assignment and a Delta math homework check okay we're down to only delta math homework checks and or assignments online no more goal formative okay so uh good luck this week math two this is your last really kind of well this is your hard week next week will be a lot easier for you i'll taper it down for you to give a little bit of a catch your breath and then your two lessons for the last week as well for the last week of school but those are pretty important Okay. Other than that, uh, have a great week, everyone. I'll see you uh, if you come by office hours. Remember, noon to one, office hours, Monday through Friday. If you need questions answered, come see me. Other than that, everything due at Friday at midnight. Okay. Friday at midnight. That's it. All right. Have a great week. Bye-bye.